review, I am going to be reviewing The Diviners by Le Bray. And I had been meaning to do this review for quite a while, but I figured today would be the perfect day to do it because today is Le Bray's birthday. So happy birthday, Le Bray. Um, for those of you who don't know, Le Bray is pretty much one of my favorite young adult um, writers, modern writers today. I think that she has a great sense of, you know, telling stories, writing really well-developed female characters and male characters as well. I think she just has a really great sense of story and voice. And while I wasn't very happy overall with um, Beauty Queens, I have always held her to a very high standard. And so when her newest book, The Diviners, came out, I was super excited, picked it up at the hardcover edition and everything, and I was not disappointed at all. This was an excellent return to form. For people who are familiar with Liverbury's work and for those who are not familiar with it, this is a great way to, I think, get an idea of what she's like, how she writes characters and everything like that. So the general, so the, <clears throat> so the general premise of this novel is that there is this young girl named Evie O'Neill um, in 1926 who, due to getting involved with um, issues at home and just getting on the wrong side of the tracks, she is moved from her home to go stay with her uncle Will in New York City. And during her stay in New York City, um, she finds herself getting involved with some very occult activities. Her uncle owns an occult museum, and during this time there's a serial killer killing um, young women and men in very crude, dark, occultish ways. And because of the museum, People, including reporters, start flocking to it looking for answers, and Evie sort of gets wrapped up in the whole idea of what's going on. Um, so when I first read Evie's character, I was a little frustrated by her because she is just kind of so there. You know, this is like the 1920s midway, you know, so she's very much into the flapper culture of that time, and she just, she refuses to not be seen or acknowledged. And yet, when I was planning on both writing the review that I wrote for good reason and doing this review now, what I realized about Evie's character is that she very much embodies the new woman of that time. She wants to be seen, she wants to be heard, she wants to be a part of living, and because she comes from a relatively, you know, conservative area, this is her chance to rebel and really rebel strongly. And I think it's always interesting because if you look at historical patterns, you know, there'll usually be one really rebellious period and then a sort of conservative period. I think right now she's kind of like trying to reach out and grab as much as she can right now with the power that she's been given as a new woman. And so I came to kind of respect that she was so forward in the way she acted. Um, you know, I fully understand like this is, you know, this is Evie, she's a part of her own environment and that's really great. And you know, finally where she's in an era where she can be this way and not be shamed for it and to be in New York where you know, it's this huge city everyone is kind of part of this new culture and environment to really the metropolitan area. I understood who she was as a character and I feel like what Libra Bray does is that she's not afraid to write flawed female leads. There are times where Evie is annoying and stupid and you recognize that as part of the narrative that she is being immature and foolish at this time and we are supposed to be like no that's stupid and I think that she's very forward about that as a writer. She doesn't try to make her characters perfect. They are who they are. When you really want to shake Evie and just be like stop doing this, stop doing all these things, stop talking to the reporter guy. But you know those situations were meant to see as frustrating and not cute. And you know I think that some people might find it cute but I don't think that's really the attention. It's supposed to be like you know she wants to capture this moment that she kind of forgets the bigger picture because she's not used to seeing everything that kind of Broadway. She's kind of selfish in the beginning and part of her arc in this series is growing out of that stage and becoming, you know, taking that empowerment and not just playing around with it but really taking it into herself and becoming a more full-fledged person. Um, the occult and horror aspects were very dark for the genre and the depths are very, will remain with you for a while. They're very well detailed. They are dark. Um, they're not to the point where you would move this up um, in age level, but I think that I think some people are used to YA kind of skirting around the darkish bits. But I feel like Bray has this really great way of getting to those really gritty parts and letting you 
capture that picture of it without going too far apart where you kind of feel like well should I not give this to like a 15 year old I think she balances that structure really well in this story and it fits with the narrative you know when you're dealing with the occult satanic rituals these kind of processes you can't um whitewash it in order to make it more feasible she takes all the bad all the good and puts it into there and I say that about not just um the occult aspects, but I think the entire time period. I think when a lot of people do time period pieces, they fall in love with the era, and they fall in love with it to an extent that they forget what actually happened and only focus on what they wish happened, or what they think happened, or what the media has told them has happened. And I think that Bray really avoids that in her world building of, you know, getting into this time period in the 1920s. She does talk about, you know, the lingo of the time and get all that stuff, but she also gets to know the racism going on, the um, kind of social Darwinist aspects of it, the way that they treat the disabled during this time period, um, the religious and the scientific clashes that are going on during this time period. Everything about what's going on, both the good and the bad of the 1920s, is in this book. And I love that because I really hate when books take place during an era and they forget that this wasn't just all wonderful. I read so many steampunk Victorian era novels that completely ignore the social problems going on in the Victorian era because they make every single character like a, a noble or an aristocrat. But even within those societies there are still issues that are never really addressed and I think that Bray knows how to address those things and keep it interesting. Um, for in addition to that we, there's also a second POV. Um, this this novel is one I, I think is going to be three. I think it's going to be part of the series. And so one of the POVs we get in the story is a, is a black male character named Memphis. And I really liked Memphis because, not just because of, you know, his own kind of like supernatural powers and how he into that something bigger and his whole family was connected to do into it. But I like this, like, you have a black man in the series, which is, of course, great representation in New York City. Thank you. He was in Harlem. Holla. And then he has culture. One of the things I've always talked about when I talk about when people who aren't people of color write people of color is how sometimes they forget that there's more to being that race than just looking that way. There is culture to it if you've grown up in that culture. And I think Bray gets that. I saw that in Beauty Queens when she had, you know, black characters in there. And I see that in The Diviners with Memphis. He has culture. He isn't just, you know some white guy who's chocolate colored he is a black man and he represents a black man of that time his fears his ambitions um the way his family unit is put in with the older matriarchal figure the younger brother and how that kind of whole thing works it's a really well thought out character in what we see of him i think it's going to probably gonna play a bigger role as the series continues but from what we did see of him it was really great i just loved all the characters in this novel it's not as you know huge as um a great and terrible beauty but I think Bray does with the characters that she has a really excellent job it's not and it's not romance heavy there's I don't think like, I, I was looking through it again and I don't think that Evie has a love interest that I would really name at the top of my head there's no love interest there's no love triangle there's nothing about love it's about Evie dealing with her journey dealing with the death of her brother because as you know there are you know she lost her brother during World War One, and so that's brought up again which is also excellent you know with acknowledging the loss that people have had from that period before and so when you get the serial killer aspects and how all those kind of things kind of connect it makes it like oh that works you know it, it makes sense for what she's doing every step of the way and as for the villain in this story what I think I enjoyed is that sometimes they try to make the villain like some kind of hottie hottie guy that's kind of a love interest kind of not not in this he's just an evil dude that you just have to get through and I, that's just refreshing it's all that you know having a villain who's just a villain is refreshing but that's how I felt about this series um I mean this is villain he was evil he was going to be defeated he represented something dark and it was something that Evie had to face and deal with on her own and I felt like that was very you know, refreshing because usually it's like oh he's some hot guy that she has to fall in love with but for sexual tension and she's got to fight and like drags on for like three novels and it's like no Bray gets it. Bray gets it. Bray always gets it. Um, so I guess I have a lot of praise for this novel because I really think it's it's just genuinely good. I mean it's like over almost 600 pages but it doesn't feel 600 pages. It, it's a very fast read. It's a very quick read. I just love it. I felt like it was a really good return to form. It was a strong story with a strong lead character, strong themes, a really good sense of the setting and I would highly recommend it. If you've never read a Little Bray book before this is a great one. This Ogre and Terrible Beauty. I highly recommend it. Happy birthday!